to the Grow Remote Show. My name is Graham, and I'm part of the community team alongside Dono here at Grow Remote, where our mission is to help make remote employment local. We do this by making remote work more visible and accessible locally. Today's session is all about remote work skills, and it's episode two of a three-part series called Remote Jobs, where we are sharing knowledge and insight from remote work experts within the Grow Remote community. We are absolutely delighted to be joined by Victoria McCormick today, who's certainly that, an expert in remote. Victoria is a team lead for merchant advocacy at Shopify with eight years experience in working remotely. Shopify is one of the Ireland's largest remote employers, giving hundreds of people the choice where they want to live, work and participate locally. As a business, they are trusted by more than a million of the world's most successful brands, to sell, ship, and process payments anywhere. In terms of structure today, I will be your host for the next 30 minutes, and I'm being supported by my friend and teammate, Donal. You will see him in the chat, where he'll be busy connecting with you all and sharing some of the key takeouts from the conversation today and any relevant links in the chat. The session is being recorded, but that captures video only and not the chat activity. So do get involved and we will do our best to address any questions raised during the conversation or pick them up at the end in the space that we have for Q&A. So Victoria, a massive thank you for joining us today. I'm really looking forward to speaking with you and sharing the positive energy and insights with our community. Before we get started, it can be a, a useful frame to put around our conversation by getting your view on what remote work means to you. So if you were the editor of the Oxford Dictionary, how would you describe remote work? It's a great question. Uh, I suppose it's about having the flexibility to kind of work away from the like official location, like the company's official location, whether that be in copy shops, whether that be in your home, um, just to be able to work anywhere. Uh, and yeah, that's probably how I would define it. Yeah, it's great to have choice, isn't it? Yeah, 100 percent. And just have like that flexibility um, to kind of change things up, change your environment and be able to experience the, the perks within that too. Brilliant. Could you maybe tell us a little bit about your, your own journey into remote work? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, so I worked remotely for the first time in 2013 with Apple and did like a frontline support role, then went to like a tier two and like a manager in that role, all working remotely. Um, once like near the end of like 2019, I also worked remotely for um, a company called iJuda Group, which is for teaching English online. Um, and it was for children in Beijing and Taiwan. So I would do that on the weekends, like throughout the evenings, because they're like time differences, not the same as ours, obviously. Um, and then in 2019, I actually uh, left that job and went uh, traveling for seven months in a camper van. Uh, thank God I did in 2019, because yeah. don't think I would have been going uh, this year. Uh, and then when I came back, I obviously needed a job because I spent all my money having the best time of my life and uh, got the job then in Shopify and saw that it was remote. And I was delighted to get back into that space because I, I really enjoyed it previously. Um, and I suppose I'd been away from home for, for seven months. So I was looking forward to spending a, a lot more time back in my, my comfort zone. Brilliant. That's a really uh, amazing range of remote work experiences, um, as well as the camper van, <laughs> which I guess in, in a way is it, part of that can be remote as well. But maybe going back to the start of your career um, and maybe let's draw out some of the remote work skills that you had um, during the different stages of your career, um, starting back in the early days, what was important for you um, when you got started into remote, what stood out for you as important in the workplace as skill set? 
Yeah, um, I suppose in the like when I was in like frontline support, like my day was very much mapped out. So like kind of obviously had to be organized and disciplined to make sure like I was at my desk at the right time um, and taking breaks uh, within that. Like I suppose with regards to the frontline support role, like you have a, like a lot of support around you from from the people that you're working with. But at the end of the day, like it's very important that you're taking ownership within that space, even though like you have like a schedule that you're you're following. Um, it can be very easily distracting. Uh, there's been a couple of times where like I'm like, oh, that that washing could be done uh, right now. <laughs> uh, but making sure that like at the end of the day, I'm, I'm doing what is expected of me. Uh, and then like on the flip side within that, when you're obviously being a lead like in that space, you have to be even more disciplined because your day isn't mapped out um, and you have a lot more autonomy kind of within that. So like at the end of the day, like there's always going to be discipline with every role, uh, but it's just about kind of knowing your boundaries uh, within that. And also like I'm very passionate about the work that I do and I make sure I'm in a job that I love and that I enjoy. And with that, sometimes all of a sudden I could be at my desk and it's been like six hours have gone and I'm like, oh, wait, did I stand up? today uh for myself not just to go to the bathroom uh so I think like being aware of that um and also then on not only just on that side but it's also like that engagement piece like how are you engaging with your people uh you know some people prefer not to engage as much as others um but I think it's very important to find ways like you take ownership of that culture within yourself um and like communicating with your peers and, and depending on your role like you might just be comfortable like for the role that I was in like I was talking to customers all day every day over the phone so right. I had like some sort of social interaction but if you're someone maybe you know on like a chat system and you don't and you're just kind of chatting you don't have that like conversational like how are you going to get that um and kind of create a space for you and also like working with others around you because you can be well 100% certain that others are going to need that too. I, I, I really relate to, to the piece you're saying there about being deliberate about these things. So, so and taking responsibility um, of that as, as a skill set for yourself. So, yes, you're in a team and yes, you have management and leadership. But when you're working remotely, it's very important that you take responsibility. You're deliberate for your well-being. You're deliberate for how you engage and connect with the team based on your own needs, I guess, as well. Um, yeah definitely with your um sorry just with your like own needs like you know everyone works different hours in the day and like I find that's usually a lot of the beauty in remote working is like you do have flexibility to like work your own hours like for me like in, in my role and like my team like I just focus on the outcomes um I'm not, like not super concerned how it's done I'm just focused that like this is what we're aiming to achieve and that's what I expect how you get there is completely up to you and how you map out your day is completely up to you I just expect this outcome um and like with that like I've worked across like multiple time zones so right now where I'm working I work with Ireland and Canada um east so they're five hours pint um so like with that I have to make accommodations for that like if we wanted to do a team event Canada or East are finishing at 3 p.m that's 8 p.m in my Irish time and my Irish people finish at 3 p.m so how do you create as like a social space uh for that and like usually you go to the like go out for drinks or go for dinner like if you're in an office um whereas you can get a lot more creative uh, and there's a lot of things out there online. Um, even like something that we were looking at the other day was um, like a, a drag bing bingo brunch thing that you can do online. Like there's so many different activities, free and things that you can pay for. Very good. Yeah, I, I guess one of the big uh, key skills, and this is not related to remote or office bound, is communication. So. Um, going back to there, you're saying about communicating with teams across different time zones or considering people with different preferences of how they communicate to each other. Um, do you have any examples or thoughts around uh, communicating 
with directly with team members and, and is there a difference in language or tone or style or even tools that need to be used for doing that yeah definitely like I think um when you're kind of dealing with like different times and different coaches or even just like you're dealing in in Ireland as a space as on its own like if you're communicating via like a digital environment versus like like on camera or like in a meeting space uh, the communication is different like I find you know you have to be very specific if you're communicating on like an instant messaging and try and provide as much context as possible otherwise you're going to be going back and forth in messages and time's going to get wasted and like a lot of people do tend to like oh let's just jump in a hangout and like talk it through and it takes like five minutes compared to like 30 minutes later a slack messages if you haven't been clear enough or maybe you miscommunicate and someone like something that you could say is I want you to do a presentation here's the slide deck and then like a week later the person did their own presentation because the word you use was I wanted want you to do a presentation um, and like took the slide deck as like an example so it's really important to be like very specific in your language and instant messaging um, and then when you're kind of interacting on that like camera space like try not to make it all work 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 um, try and like take some, that space and time to build relationships because the stronger relationships you build the easier the work will be and the easier it will be to collaborate um, with the teams that you're working with and then specifically to me like with time zones like I might have to speak to someone in New Zealand and for me to move forward in it I am writing a message today but I know I'm going to receive a response tomorrow and if I don't write that message appropriately today I could be delayed another two days because I haven't put like the right context or right information or maybe I've even just reached out to the wrong person. That's great advice about um, putting the right language into the communications depending on where they're going and when you need responses by. Um, I'm just thinking, and not to dwell too much on the past, but you've got great experience um, when you started remote working um, doing frontline support. So there, there's, there's going to be a lot of people making a similar uh, first step into the world of remote. And, and I'm wondering, is there any difference in the communication for if someone's moving from a retail environment um, and dealing with customers face to face? And they then move into a remote environment and they're doing that over the phone. Is there a difference? There may not be a difference between the skills that are required. Um, and as leading a team, what would you expect from uh, people in that position to be strong at? Yeah, I suppose 100% like the skills that you have in that environment, you can totally apply in a remote work environment. Like all those skills are 100% transferable. Um, if anything, you're actually going to be able to level up those skills um, when it comes to like communication and like engaging, um, rebuilding trust, um, problem solving, because you're not like in a space where someone can like show you a picture of maybe something that they're looking for or, um, you know, maybe they have questions on a particular product and, you know, you don't have it in front of you and you've got to go find that. It actually allows you to level your skills up further um, because you can get more creative. Um, so like someone, instead of like having the picture to show you, you've got to ask more probing questions about that product. What does it look like? What color is it? Why do you need it? Um, and try and understand more of like the individual you're speaking to. So if anything, you get to build relationships even further because you're showing more curiosity to that situation because you, you have to, um, because you have less physical context in front of you. Um, but that's not to say that you can't obtain that context. You just maybe have to ask a few more questions or, you know, try and listen to certain points that individual is saying. Uh, and you've got less distractions, right? You're not like, if you go by your example, like in a shop, you might have three people standing behind you. We're coming up to Christmas right now. Maybe you're like, okay, I've got these three other people. I've got to deal with them. And this stock thing has to happen. I have to do this. I have to ring this person. Whereas like in your remote environment, in that moment, you can prioritize that particular person that you're working with in that time and also you can be communicating in your um, certain methods that you have within the, the company that you're working with. Uh, having worked in retail myself at some stage Victoria I can really relate to that and it's great advice that the skills set, being able to recognize that you can prioritize 
um, and actually doing that, I think is fantastic advice. Um, I'd like to move more into the present um, <laughs> in terms of your work experience again. Yeah, um, sure. And now you're leading remote teams. Um, and are there any kind of standout skill sets? And I guess there's two sides to this. So one, what, what skill sets do you like to see um, within your team of remote workers? And then mm -hmm. we can also, I guess, on the other side of that is what skills did you need to develop differently um, to be in a position to lead remote teams? But we can start yeah. with one, one question at a time. <laughs> well, I love talking about my team because um, they're brilliant. And like what I kind of did for from like a leadership, because I've actually just hired a lot in my team is I did like a skill assessment. So I looked at like, what are the role specific skills that I'm looking for? And then what are the general team specific skills that I'm looking for? Uh, and then with that, like tailor my hiring process like around that. Um, so I wasn't looking for people who worked remotely, um, but I was looking for specific skills that they had strengths in to do the, the specific role that I am in. Um, but a big thing I think that people can, that are really successful are people with a growth mindset. So individuals who are always seeking to grow and get better and like finding like opportunities um, and looking at ways to like consistently improve, whether that be themselves, the systems, the things that they're working on, the team and taking ownership in that. So like I tell my team that they're, they're kind of like leading without a title um, because they have like their own responsibilities, they take ownership of the the actions that they're taking, um, and yeah, being very very like self directed um, in that with like like I give them very limited direction uh, in that space, and I think like all these skills that I'm calling out are applicable to like any um, role really that you are working in. And um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I think as well, like relationship building is just so important. Uh, it's so key. And like, you can build on your communication, but how can you like support your peers on a like work basis, but also like how are you getting to know other individuals? And then like, once you know your team, like how are you pushing that information then like getting to know others within the, the business? And then if you have information, never making the assumption that everyone else knows, um, like share it, uh, over communicate, because it's much better if you over communicate than under communicate. Like someone will tell you, oh, we actually don't need that information. But if you're not sharing that information, no one will tell you. Very good. Yeah. Um, you just mentioned there about um, looking after the team. The team sound fantastic, by the way. Um, look, yeah, they're very good. The team and looking after the team, I guess, is there, is there a different skill that's required to do um, leadership or management tasks such as one-to-ones um, and reviews? That is there anything different in a remote environment for the employee or, or the team manager? Um, than there is kind of face-to-face? -face. Um, I have had like experiences where like certain like individuals don't like being on camera um, and like engaging in that sort of way um, for like their own personal reasons. Uh, so it can be like a challenge to gauge like where the individual is at. And I find that like, you know, one-on-one -on -one is an hour long um, for me anyway. And in that hour, you can, like a lot of people can give poker face. So how well do you know your people in the sense of like, like their personality type um, and like what sort of things do they enjoy? Uh, I think it's very important to like listen, but also like reading the room and like taking that further from like outside the one-on-ones and like how are they engaging within the team? How are they engaging in team meetings? Um, Cause like, 
when you're in like a, a like an office office environment like you're sitting in front of the person um or you're in the office and you're seeing like oh they're not really interacting with the team they're they're going on lunch by themselves they're going on breaks or like i don't really see them hanging around like you can see that a lot more visibly and you can do something about it so it's about like creating spaces to like see that a lot more um and then like in your one-on-ones a great question that i was told is um I think we tend to ask like how are you and everyone will just go I'm fine or like I'm okay and you're it's just a response because it's like it's an easy question to divert like actually no I'm not in a good space or I'm struggling or I need help um and the question I would ask is what's on your mind uh and that's a great question because then it's like they have like they're, they can't just go okay or I'm fine um they have to get like usually you get a lot more from that and I've just found like even just asking that first opening question you obtain a lot more context on how that person is feeling maybe the things that like they want to get off their chest and if you as a lead focus around building trust with your reports maybe being vulnerable yourself demonstrating empathy you can create that space so then you don't have to ask that question they're going to tell you anyway that's fantastic advice, Victoria. Um, creating that space so that the question doesn't need to be asked. Just just avoid it uh, entirely. Um, also thinking from the employee um, and, and, a, and a remote skill set, our world is online like we are now. And there's lots of tools and, and platforms. And they, I guess, they have also changed throughout your career as you've moved to different platforms and tools. What sort of skill is there needed to, to kind of come into our role and think, okay, let, let's, I'm moving into a remote environment now. I, I don't have something physically in front of me. I may not have somebody sitting beside me to help me. Is there a skill set around platforms and technology that a remote worker should have? Yeah, I suppose what I'll do is I'll speak for me personally and then I'll speak to like in general, like for me, it's definitely patience. Um, just going through like different tools. Like I broke my iPhone there two weeks ago and I'm using another phone and I'm struggling with that. Um, so like just having that patience, like if you're moving from different roles and using different tools, just know that like you will get used to it. Um, you just have to give it the, the chance to get used to. And like, how can you make it so it's easier for you to use? Like I had to move to a Chromebook, but I'm still using an Apple keyboard because um, I can't use the, the cap socks. It's about like getting innovative in that space that you feel like, okay, like I have this machine, like how can I make it so it's e easier for me to use and I can be most efficient at my day like, I think it's just it, it's so important um, to be able to work and enjoy the work that you're doing it can be so frustrating if like there's a tool there that's not working um, and you know you're sitting there and you're like what do I do and you do and you don't have this help IT and then that's when you kind of like incorporate skills in yourself to be like okay so this isn't working what else can I use? Why is it not working? Is it this? Is it that? I think it's about like problem solving in that space. Like, okay, so Wi-Fi is not working on this computer. Can I tether my phone and connect? Can I download the app on my phone and join the meeting that way? Like I've lost internet a couple of times here. Um, so I've had meetings outside in the garden with my phone. Everyone loves my view. Um, and I'm just there like enjoying it um, and hoping it doesn't rain. Uh, so there's just, it's just about like being proactive and kind of going, pausing for a moment and being like, what else is there uh, in that? Like not getting too like bogged down and like, oh, I'm gonna miss this and I need to do this and I need to do that. The main priority is I don't have internet. How do I get internet? Um, and what is the, the solution within that? Even like before this, I didn't have Zoom uh, on my computer and I was like, I need to get Zoom. <laughs> so uh, I literally like clicked a link and there was a, a Google Chrome extension. I added it, I downloaded it and the issue was resolved in one minute. I didn't need to re rely on like an IT individual. But that being said, a lot of companies that are remote working do have a, an IT team that like you can reach out to. Um, and even like I've had people who their headset stops working. Um, and with that, it's like, okay, do you have 
your own headset at home like we usually do have like headphones of some sort that have a microphone on it um especially with like technology and how it's going these days so yeah it's just about like trying not to like be worried about the problem and like focus on the solution great advice love love that uh, problem solving and very grateful that you solved the problem uh, before this call so that you can be here and join <laughs> us today um, yeah like even it, with that you know obviously we had a doc I commented on that I checked my email I saw that you gave me a, like a webinar id so I was like okay I gotta use this gotta and I remember that the doc said zoom so I downloaded zoom so it's about like retracing your steps and being like and I like I didn't just kind of st stop and be like oh I'll just wait for them to contact me um I like I had a commitment and I needed to figure that out um and like worst comes to worst I had your email I would have emailed you uh and and communicated it so it's just about like identifying that and taking action I, you also gave me a really nice example there about uh, walking about outside and for me that 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 calls out flexibility, not just in how you approach your work remotely, um, but the fact that, you know, you trust the people around you um, and you're like, look, this doesn't have to be perfect. We, we have a goal, we have an objective to achieve. And if it's about connecting, you know, in, in specific circumstances, does it matter if you're sitting at your desk or does it, can it be outside and connecting? So I think there's a skill set there somewhere in terms of, yeah accepted how it is and really prioritize what's important yeah i think um one thing i did like during the pandemic uh what i started getting into being like okay in your one-on-one -on -one, like how do we need to be near the computer do you have something that you need to show me on this computer right now and they're like no i'm like okay then let's go for a walk um so like they'd go for a walk with me i'd actually uh, bring my dog with me too um, and I'd just be like walking around I'd wa I walked to the park and like just came back and we were just having a one-on-one -on -one because like then there's no distractions there's no like slack going off there's no situations happening it's just you that one other person kind of you know shooting it out talking about um, the things that are going on and I find that like it feels more personal and you get like more raw information um, also you're getting outside you're having exercise like it's it's a it's a positive um, and like obviously it's completely optional like it, it's up to the the individual uh, I've even done it for like book clubs like where I've said do you want to go and do, we do a book club and we'd read a book um, and then like each week we talk about certain chapters and I said like who fancies doing book club like outside um and like what we would have to do is like mute ourselves when we're not talking because then someone would be walking and you'd hear like drilling or something because they're in the city but um with that everyone just seemed to like getting out of the house and moving and i think we can very easily fall into like we need this meeting that meeting this meeting um and i think like if you look at like your week and you calculate all the meetings that you're in it's actually terrifying how many hours we probably spend in meetings uh and it's just like one of those things that asking yourself okay like does this need to be in a meeting or can i just communicate like asynchronously via a chat system and how can i better like utilize that time um and like and then when you save that time you can maybe make the like meetings you're getting rid of like extra time for like social connects or a coffee chat coffee chats still happen when you work remotely they don't go away um you can still have them you can have lunch together like we just had breakfast lunch and dinner yesterday as a leads team because it was breakfast for some and, and dinner for for me so i think like if you don't have to be by the desk then don't very nice and um and you're talking there about connecting with people. And I guess that's, um, in essence, the, the teamwork. So working remotely, we mentioned earlier on about being deliberate, um, being engaged with the team. Um, and your team sounds like a lot of fun. Can, can you maybe share some examples from the, the team about how they are actively engaged with each other or you as a leader encourage them to engage and connect with each other? Yeah, um, so like some daily things that we have is like we have a daily jump off. So when um, the other time zone comes in, we connect and some of it will just be like, you know, talking about 
movies we're watching and it can be very relaxed and then other conversations we could be talking about you know specific content that we need to go over or maybe we want to collaborate with one another um we also then have like questions of the day um where like I think I asked yesterday what was the last movie people saw at the cinema um so like kind of asking questions around that and uh like people can post like videos of their pets uh I'm a big person of that like I swear people are probably sick of seeing my dogs uh and like other people do it and you can and like people post pictures of their kids um and then on like a kind of broader scale we do like in a team event so uh, someone on my team is like a circus performer um, and like does like clowning so they did an event with us where we made like juggling balls this is like a balloon and rice uh, and like they taught us how to juggle um, and like gave us some like history and knowledge about like clowning and stuff and we just had like a few drinks and just chatted and like just hung out and had a laugh together uh, and then we also I also just ran a what we call like a like a home site um, where it's like some people would call them in the office like off sites where you're like taking away from the work and you like focus on like planning and stuff but we're at home so that's why we called them home sites and uh we decided just to focus it around like engagement and like relationship building um and it ran for like 12 hours because it was across the four time zones and it had like two options with it like either or that you could do and i had like a pet meet and greet like there's 40 people on the team across four time zones there's some time zones that never met another time zone so like they had a little bit more overlap because they moved their hours a little bit so pet meets and greets escape rooms we did murder mysteries um and i had like a very like social interactive option but also then maybe something a little bit lighter because being on camera for like i did the 12 hours and like being on camera for that amount of time like it, it's draining it can be incredibly draining um and it's about like especially when you're like engaging with a lot of people it's like if you went to like a 12 hour festival like you would be tired after that um what else did we do we did like online art therapy which was really really nice um and then like a social roulette so like it was like a meet and greet um and then we did i'm trying to think of the other things we did loads of things all i know is that i had a lot of fun um and I got feedback from it and the consensus was that like everyone got felt more connected within the team brilliant and i guess like that's a brilliant example uh for from a team leader leading remote teams but what it also calls out to me is that team members and remote workers they've got to get engaged and really be open to participating um openly as well which is which is a skill in itself uh, but very important to be engaged and and support and connect and work with each other as a team right yeah and like we did some exercises i just remember there we did like um what we call like blind drawing and like someone had to like describe it and then we all had to draw it oh my god if you saw some of the drawings they were wild <laughs> um but it was just something that um people could still come to the sessions and not participate and just be there and be present so i think like it's very hard for like a big group of people to be like a one size fits all and you have to be aware of that um and kind of like and that happens whether you're remote or, or not remote you know um and it's about making sure that you're uh hitting like everyone's needs and being aware of like what your people need and like what one person likes and what one person doesn't like um and how can you like accommodate everyone within that and that's why like i had an option a and an option b and like option a was more like super interactive engaging high energy and then your option b was more like word word searches and like online art and like watching uh, shopify has some shows um business shows and like watching that and discussing it so that like we're kind of tailoring to to everyone's needs depending on like the day like some people in the morning are super high energy and in the afternoon are our low energy and vice versa and it's just finding ways to accommodate to that it's it's great to hear about the inclusion um, that you support uh, within leading a remote team i've got got a couple of questions that have come in victoria so I, i'll jump over to one or two of those um, and this one's from Asa, alessandro so being a leader uh, myself i was wondering how do you monitor your team's performances remotely 
Do you rely on specific KPIs? How often do you interact with the team uh, to avoid team members feeling micromanaged? Yeah, so I maybe will talk to the two different experiences I've had and like with different companies. Like I've been in roles where as a lead, there are no KPIs and we focus on outcomes and uh, with that, like with the behaviors and not so much like a, a measurement, a numerical value of success. Um, and then I've been on the complete other end of that. Um, and I've been on teams where you have to clock in and clock out. And I've also been on teams that their clock in, clock out is hello, good morning and um, goodbye. You know, so I've been on like completely different ends of the spectrum in that. like. I do think from my personal experience, it, it does come down to who you hire um, and the type of characteristics that you're looking for in certain individuals um, and also being comfortable to trust them. Um, you know, like people are, you know, have humanity and morality and like they are, you like would be like good citizens and should show up to work and do their job and have those expectations. Uh, I know that not every company allows that to happen uh so I suppose it's just kind of like how do you like engage with them around kind of like those KPIs and explain to them what the importance is uh and like creating a space to like let them have fun with those KPIs like uh, I don't have KPIs on my team at the moment but I have end of year goals for them and I put them in a bingo card um so I was like look you've got end of year bingo whoever wins first go for it and each each individual has their own like bingo cards and I've like created a game out of it. So um, it kind of like motivates them to like want to get the job done. And as they're seeing things crossed off without like seeing like a tooling system with numbers on it that, you know, they see day in, day out. How can you make it so like there is some sort of like fun exercise behind that and that applies to remote working or, or in an office. Um, and then like feeling micromanaged, I think it can happen um I have been guilty of doing that and it usually boils down to like trust um and feeling comfortable to discuss that and like having like an open conversation being and saying like am I making you feel micromanaged um you know what sort of feelings and emotions does that bring up where do you see that um happening the most like you give your team goals and you know you have to hold them accountable to it. Why not let them hold you accountable to something as well uh, and create a space that you're showing to them that like, I'm learning, uh, I'm developing too. I make mistakes as well. Um, and it just creates, solidifies that bond um, with your team so that like, they also know that, you know, you're not, you're not perfect and you're aware of that and you want them to help you because you're with them day in, day out. Why not? Right. There's, there's a thank you. There's a really important piece there as well um, around a, a remote skill of being able to give feedback, uh, not just as a as a as a team leader, but as being part of a team. There's also different channels and different ways, so you have to develop that and understand the right way to do that in a remote environment, regardless of whether that communication is going side to side with peers. Um, to management or within within the team and upwards so that's yeah good. I try and keep it um, like I encourage my team to talk to each other about what they're working on so then the team can also hold them accountable as well um, and like with that like if they don't feel comfortable then maybe that's a different problem um, that you need to own as a lead and asking them why they don't feel comfortable. And like, you know, you've got subject matter experts in here. You've got people who have really strong skills. Um, why are we not leveraging them? And I also talk to my team and like, I don't want you to work harder. It's just about working smarter, utilizing the things around us. I don't, you know, I don't need you to do a course. I don't need you to go and read like 10 books. Maybe if you speak to, you know, Graham in this department or who's already on our team but they're just in like a different area and you just got to chat them and, and book a coffee chat and ask go in with curiosity uh more so than like I need this 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 and this um I think it just creates a better environment brilliant advice and, and a great way to connect with people as well so we've got I've got a couple of questions um here we go Good. This one's about motivation. So I guess we kind of touched on it at the start around um, being disciplined and understanding where you are. 
Um, this one is, how do you keep yourself motivated if you're under pressure? Uh, working alone in a room, it can be hard to stay energized and positive. Yeah, um, I think like just with me and my personality, I kind of thrive in that environment. Like I'm on a team there that deals with high stress environments. So I suppose that, like that to me would be like, let's do it, ready to go. But I know not everyone is, is like that. I think like if you're feeling unmotivated, then maybe you need to step away from the computer. Maybe you are not going to provide your best work right now. Um, and you need to be kind of self-aware in yourself and being like, okay, like I'm not motivated. Maybe I need to do something that re-energizes me in a different way. Uh, so like a big thing for me is if I'm like, having like a bad day or if I'm feeling like oh I just like Tuesday I wasn't well I was like not feeling great in myself um I was feeling kind of sick and um well firstly I, I like you can take the personal day like if you need a personal day take the personal day um but secondly like working remotely I have two lovely dogs um so when I'm not feeling motivated they give me more energy than I think anyone can so they motivate me and like they're a big part of my life and they put smiles on me um so that's like something for me and I'm big into music so like listening to music in that space like it's not like a I'm not going to be able to tell you being like do this thing and it will work you have to identify what works for you and what makes you motivated and a lot of it is can be also like like are you motivated about the work that you're doing? Um, and, you know, if you're not, then maybe ask why. Uh, what is it that's unmotivating you? Is it the type of work you're doing? Is it the amount of work that you're doing? And maybe that needs to change. And how can you take that ownership and, and maneuver within that? Maybe it's canceling a few meetings so you can take a lunch um, and take a step away and, and have something nice to eat. Uh, I think it's more about like, when I kind of feel unmotivated for me, it's usually because like f physically I'm not feeling okay. Um, and like with that, like I just try kind of assess my situation and be like, what do I need right now? Uh, and if I'm struggling to understand that, then I speak to my lead and be like, I'm feeling, I'm feeling this way and I don't know how to get it back. Um, and if you kind of don't feel comfortable talking to your lead, then maybe talking to a peer. Um, so like consistently like leaning on those around you, building those relationships and then you know maybe another thing I also do is like I'll have a shower um I know it's strange it's in the middle of the day um but I might like have a shower put on some music um during my lunch break have something to eat so like I'm kind of like refreshed to like start the day again um there's like there's a million ways you can do this you know some people on my team play Fortnite um for for 30 minutes because it gets them engaged that's actually another thing we did as a team we played Fortnite. um it like ended miserably they were like carrying me everywhere it was very funny though um can but yeah I that's probably what i would say to join the next <laughs> Fortnite session <'cause> it, <laughs> i know they'll probably be carrying me when this like fog this apparently this purple, this purple fog kept coming and it was coming really fast and uh, all my team just kept having to pick me up and they were like no it's about time we uh, gave them back to you victoria <laughs> so uh yeah that's probably what i would say is like um ask yourself why you're unmotivated um and then see what ownership you can take and then see where you can lean on for support Brilliant. I, I really appreciate that advice of self-awareness that you've given and, and perhaps asking the question why is very important as well because again it's back to back to that piece where you've got to take your own responsibility uh, for, for where you are and what you're doing in, in a remote environment. Um, just looking at, at time and I'm gonna I've got a couple of we'll do a couple of quick fire questions um, before closing off if that's okay. Yep. Um, if I'm an introvert, is it good for me to be on camera all day, every day? Or how do I develop this skill? Um, I think like, you know your boundaries more than anyone. Um, it really like depends on the individual. Like I have, I have a couple of introverts on my team who are on camera and then they might send me a DM and be like, just feeling a little bit drained and they'll turn off their camera. But I'm aware of that. Um, so like, I, I know that. Um, and that's like the main 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 thing is just kind of communicating that and making it clear and 
you can build relationships in other ways like maybe you do one-on-one -on -one conversations with the other members of the team um like you make those decisions and talk to your lead and talk to your team about what what your needs are um i would have no doubt that all your team will just want to support you during that very good and we have a, a very timely question because it's about clocking off so how do you how do you help your staff with burnout and ensuring they clock off and not overworking or when working from home yeah i mean like burnout i think is something that you know i've definitely seen a lot more of like leading in the pandemic because people had nothing to do bar go to work um, and when working in that remote environment it's completely different working remote in a pandemic versus versus not um so like with burnout like that is like an ownership of the individual and being self-aware to know that like actually i'm burning out i'm not making good decisions or like for me like is it a case that you're not able to demonstrate empathy maybe you're not assuming positive intent these are kind of trip wires i would have um where like maybe i'm like reacting to everything and anything everyone's trip wires are different uh and i think like for me like as a lead if i see my team on later i'm like go home why are you here i'm not asking you to be here um and they're like oh but i want to do this thing and i'm like that's different like if you're passionate about it and you're like no i want to ship this thing victoria i'm really excited that's different to like i feel i have to stay here because i feel i have to stay here uh so it's just kind of about getting like comfortable in that maybe talk to your uh company and ask them like what are your expectations of me is this a nine to five job or whatever your shift may be and like i had a conversation with one of my reports and i was like you know, I'm not asking you to stay at till this time, but I see you're consistently staying at that time. Like, why is that happening? And they kind of said, like, oh, well, we have these things. And I was like, well, how how are you planning your day to ensure you're starting those things earlier versus later, so you can feel comfortable like leaving um, on time? Because like I don't want you to be here. So it's about like planning for that, organizing within that, and being self-aware. So I think like burnout is on the individual like companies have expectations and if you feel that those expectations are too high or you know information needs to be provided then speak to your lead and, and speak to the individuals that can make an impact in those changes uh but overall my experience with burnout is because i didn't see it soon enough um you know or i just took it too far and wasn't aware that i wasn't taking like time for myself even like this year i took up like swimming in the sea um that like reduces stress reduces anxiety uh, and like having other focus projects i was telling graham yesterday i've started like creating converting a camper van and like um turning that into a business and like having these other things to do i think you're less likely to be like work focused because you have a lot of things that you're passionate about outside but burnout's a real thing uh and it's just something that it's to like ask yourself what are your trip wires when you are experiencing burnout and is it booking a vacation sooner is it instead of booking a few days maybe you book a week or maybe you book two weeks um something i do is i book the week before christmas so i've got like two weeks off over christmas and then i book two weeks in june and july for my birthday so like i feel then because i have those two weeks i feel fully refreshed um from that and i'm a completely different person after it so they just be my trip wires and, and i guess it's nice to have markers in the sand that you know are there and they're fixed points for you to either work towards and say you know this is where i'm going towards or if you look forward and say not sure i'm gonna not you know not sure we can get there let's put something in the middle so great advice yeah like for leads like i got advice there once uh it wasn't advice like someone told me this that their experience is like from a leads uh, uh, like point of view like i could have like gone out for like a month at the beginning and took the time that i needed that personal time and you know replenish my my batteries um versus my team having a very bad lead lead for six uh for six months and the whole team being impacted within that so as much as you have a responsibility and want to support your team and be there for them 
like you have to put your own oxygen mask on first um, and take the wellness that you need because if you're not in your best self your team's going to suffer um, and it doesn't even from not a lead perspective your frontline support if you don't do that the company's customers are going to suffer um, and then your performance is going to suffer and then all of a sudden it's trending downwards and it feels difficult to get out of uh, so I just think like having that awareness and having like certain tripwires for yourself and being like and knowing like this is what I need to recharge uh, my batteries like I even did a like a digital detox one day where I didn't touch any anything technical or digital for 36 hours just to take a break I realized I have a problem with my phone because it was very difficult for the first 12 hours I just wanted to check my phone but like doing things like this that like that you like so, some could be reading some could be running like it really depends but I think knowing what you need as a person I think it, it falls on you more so than than the the company in my personal opinion and, and my experience when I've gone through it. Brilliant. Um, Victoria, we have had so much insight um, and I've had a lot of fun today. So there's two, two sets of people that I would love to say a, a massive thanks to. Uh, the first one is yourself. Um, that was a brilliant, brilliant session. Um, and also thank you to everybody that's joined us, um, been engaged in the chat, uh, and throwing some questions in there for us as well. It's been brilliant um, insight and brilliant support for the community. So thank you again, Victoria. Um, our next episode of the Grow Remote Show will be at the same time, 3 p.m. Irish on Thursday, the 9th of December, when we'll be talking all about finding and applying for remote jobs. So don't miss it. Thank you again to Victoria and Thank you also to the Grow Remote team that are behind this show, Donald and June. Once again, thank you, Victoria. Uh, see you all in the next episode. Until the next time, look after yourselves. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Victoria. <laughs>